Wow. <laughs> so like, just so you know, there was supposed to be like really loud music, and uh, there wasn't any. So I was amazing, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you all for coming today to this amazing celebration of women with pride. Brought to you by Vegas City Opera. Because haven't we all had that fantasy? Going into space, floating, seeing the universe. It's something that drives all of us as human beings. Yes. So, of course, they asked me, Dina Emerson, because you know, I have many, many advanced degrees in science, astrology, astronomy, chemistry, uh, racing, and many, many other things. So they brought me today so I could tell you about these amazing women that we are featuring and tributing, if you will, with our music. Now, the first person I would like to tell you about is Ms. Sally Ride. Who remembers Sally Ride? Anyone? Yes! <laughs> Sally Kristen Ride was born in 1951 and passed away in 2012. She was an American astronaut and physicist. She joined NASA in 1978. Ride remains the youngest American astronaut ever to have traveled into space and the third woman ever to have traveled into space. After she passed away, her obituary revealed that her partner of 27 years was Tam O'Shaughnessy, a professor emerita of school psychology at San Diego State and childhood friend. Therefore, she can also be known as the first LGBTQ person in space. So many times. Prior to her first flight, she was subject to media attention due to her gender. During a press conference, she was asked such questions as, do you weep when things go wrong? <laughs> it's true. Or, do you think the flight will affect your reproductive organs. <laughs> when Sally Ride became the first American woman in space on the Space Shuttle Challenger, many in the crowd attending the launch wore t-shirts printed, Ride, Sally, Ride, a play on the lyric of that 1965 song, Mustang Sally, and Billy Joel's 1989 song, We Didn't Start the Fire, mentions her, and in 2013, Janelle Monet 
released a song called Sally Ride. She was truly an inspiration to America and to music.
She uh, served aboard the shuttle Endeavour in 1987, and she orbited Earth for nearly eight days in 1992. Seeing a lack of female astronauts, well, that irritated her. She later recalled, everybody was thrilled about space, but I really remember being irritated that there were no women astronauts. So she did it herself. She enjoyed studying nature and human physiology, using her observations to learn more about science and the world. Although her mother encouraged her curiosity, and both her parents were supportive of her interest in science, she did not always have the same support from her teachers. When Jemison told a kindergarten teacher that she wanted to be a scientist when she grew up, the teacher assumed she wanted to be a nurse. <laughs> Nursing is great, but it's not the only kind of science. Am I right? Yeah. Can you imagine how her life and all of our lives would have been made smaller and less alive had she allowed her dreams to be diminished in that way? Thank you, Mae Jemison.
talk to you about Star Trek for a minute. <laughs> the show Star Trek. And in particular, African American actress Michelle Nichols' portrayal of Lieutenant Uhura further stoked Mae Jemison's interest in space. Later in her life, LaVar Burton, who played Lieutenant Commander Jordy LaForge, learned that Mae Jemison was an avid Star Trek fan, and so he asked her if she would be interested in being on the show. <laughs> so in 1993, Jemison appeared as Lieutenant Palmer in Second Chances, an episode of the science fiction television series Star Trek, the Next Generation. <laughs> so she became the first real-life astronaut to appear on Star Trek. <laughs> I just got goosebumps telling you that story. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Well, you know, my many degrees in uh, thermodynamic uh, engine composition have made me feel a real kinship with Danica Patrick. You know, like, yeah, heard me, man. <laughs> well, Danica Sue Patrick was born in 1982, and she is an American former professional race car driver, the most successful woman race car driver in the history of American open wheel racing. Her victory in the 2008 Indy Japan 300 is the only win by a woman in an IndyCar series race. Initially, she had no interest in racing. Patrick thought of a career as either a secretary, a singer, or a veterinarian. Aww. But her sister and Danica, when they were 10 years old, they really, really wanted to ride go-karts after they saw a friend, so their parents made it happen. And uh, the rest is history. Her father acted as her crew chief, and her mother kept statistics on her racing. Then if Danica Patrick had no role models or idols, she had to make it up herself. She aspired to be the best that she could be, no matter what she did. Huh, sounds like a woman with drive to me. Yeah!
you prepared to take the oath? I am. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Sonia Sotomayor, do solemnly swear. I, Sonia Sotomayor, do solemnly swear. That I will administer justice without respect to persons. That I will administer justice without respect to persons. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. As an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Under the Constitution and laws of the United States. Under the Constitution and laws of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and welcome to the court. Please be seated. Welcome to the White House. It is my distinct honor to introduce the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Justice Ginsburg, will you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, do solemnly swear. I, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you.
want to do that. <laughs> Thanks, Noah. Hmm. On July 7, 1981, President Reagan appointed the first woman to the Supreme Court, Sandra Day O'Connor. Sandra Day was born in 1930 in El Paso, Texas, where she grew up in a large cattle ranch. She was only 16 years old when she enrolled in Stanford University. She graduated magna cum laude with a BA in economics in 1950, and then graduated from Stanford Law in 1952. Upon graduation from law school, O'Connor had difficulty finding a paying job as an attorney because of her gender. O'Connor found employment as a deputy county attorney in San Mateo, California, after she offered to work for no salary and without an office. Sharing space with a secretary. <laughs> After a few months, she began drawing a small salary as she performed legal research and wrote memos. Sonia Sotomayor was born in 1954 and was the first Hispanic and Latina member of the Supreme Court. She was nominated by President Barack Obama in 2009. Sotomayor was born in the Bronx, New York City, to Puerto Rican born parents. She graduated summa cum laude from Princeton University in 1976 and received her Juris Doctor from Yale Law School in 1979, where she was an editor at the Yale Law Journal. During her tenure on the Supreme Court, Sotomayor has been identified with concern for the rights of defendants, calls for reform of the criminal justice system, and making impassioned dissents on the issue of race, gender, and social justice. Elena Kagan was born and raised in New York City after graduating from Princeton University, the University of Oxford, and Harvard Law School. She clerked for a federal judge, a court of appeals judge, and for Supreme Court Justice Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall. She began her career as a professor at the University of Law School at Chicago, leaving to serve as associate White House counsel, and later as policy advisor under President Bill Clinton. Subsequently, she became a professor at Harvard Law School and was later named its first female dean.
in peace, RBG. You meant so much to us, and you are deeply missed.